Hi, my name is Andrew Satavoy. Welcome to Week 8, Systematic Keyboard Handling, Part 2, for the course An Introduction to Interactive Programming in Python by Joe Warren, John Greiner, Stephen Wong, and Scott Rixner. So in the last video, we saw code that separates the keyboard bindings from the game details. In this video, we will encapsulate these concepts into a class. Again, you can use this approach in any game that requires key bindings. Before we continue, I need to introduce a new keyword we haven't seen in the course called Lambda. This is a very powerful concept, but I'll be using it in a limited way within my code. I provide a link to the Python documentation where you can find out more about how it works. Um, and that's really all I'm going to say about it. But in any case, here you can see the general idea. Lambda is another way to de of defining a function. The two pieces of code shown are semantically equivalent. Um, that means they're basically the same as far as uh, you can tell. Um, it may look strange, but it's necessary for the implementation we will use. So moving on, these are the drawbacks for the implementation that I created in part one. So first of all, it's difficult to add new behaviors because we need to add new methods to handle setting new key bindings and we need to update the labels and so on. We can do it, but it's cumbersome. Um, the key handling is spread throughout the code, um, which isn't great. Not a good idea. Um, and both of these two issues make it difficult to reuse this code elsewhere. It'll be hard to extract just the key handling code to use in another game. It should be easy to do so. And uh, what we're going to do is make it so that it is. So we can do better by creating cl a class that can bind key handlers to any frame, uh, can update and maintain its key bindings, encapsul encapsulates the key handling process so we can easily reuse it, and still keeps key handling separate from game details and allows user customization. So how it works is, like in part one, we will start with game-specific functions such as thrust and turn left. Uh, next, we define a key map class which will encapsulate the behavior of part one and add some new functionality as well. Uh, then we'll create a global instance of key map and initialize and update the key map object. And finally, we connect to the key map to the frame. Um, so this is a much simpler implementation than we when we saw before. So let's look at some code. 